one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. Hello, hello, hello. And here we are. What is that? 70,000 trees died for no reason whatsoever. I am so sorry. Oh, dang it. It's a good term, paper, Lynn. <laughs> and it's all just this crap. I just, I, sorry. Hello. I was just trying to download this. They printed it landscape form as opposed to. Yeah, 49 pages. <laughs> oh my God. I was trying to get one page of, and you know, I got, it would be, no, I hate that. The wonders of computerization. Yeah. Outrageous. Is there some way to, you know, next time you turn that on, it's going to print out the rest? <laughs> How long was the article? It says 49 pages. The article's not 49 pages. It's when you download and you don't just get the article. You, you get, get the all whole, the whatever. crap. <laughs> this is 7,000 pages of people being clever in comments. That's all it is. That's what it is. Fat, crippled banker. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tom Sokolowski. He's... Referring to a subject from last week, yeah, right. from last week, about how swearing um, evolves and what's considered a swear word evolves, and that uh, the person who was the expert in this regard said that she felt that the what looked to be lining up to be the next the vogue of total swear words, considered yes. swear words, are those which we already find objectionable. Right. Like cripple and fat, fat. <laughs> banker, and banker, <laughs> and so, so if you hit your hat, your, your hand with a hammer, instead of saying "oh shit," you'd say "fat crippled banker." Fat crippled banker. <laughs> Actually, I went and bought the book. Oh, did you? And I haven't started reading it yet. But, uh, <laughs> it has lots of scurrilous oh, words oh, and man. little uh, imaging, particularly out of Chaucer. So anyway. Oh yeah, well Chaucer, it's an it's an uh, it's endless. It's just uh, endless stuff. But it's what we think of as dirty now, and what right, they thought exactly, of, exactly. Uh, he smoked her. He sm something yeah. her nether eye. Her nether eye and his rod in her. His whatever. rod in her. <laughs> <laughs> and <Right. laughs> so anyway, this stupid thing that we wasted all this. Can we put the paper, let's put the paper back in upside down and, and let it print out the rest of it. Anyway, isn't it something how we've, you do change your sensibilities. There, yeah, there, right. There's not, I mean, I might have said, oh, damn, I wasted all that paper. Right. But now I'm thinking of it as like it's almost criminal. It's right. like such an outrageous. <sighs> anyway. Well, tell us what is off those pages. Okay, what got Zero. me is it was it was an article titled "America's Dumbest Congressman," and as Tom pointed out, man, you'd have to be pretty dumb to, to, to get, get that award. Right? Jeez, what the? How dumb would this guy have to be? Well, we're not surprised. He's from what state? Texas. Yes, of Ooh. course. They've got about you know ten in the in the top ten probably. Um, Louis Gohmert. Uh, he sounds like a dumb guy. Republican of Texas. He, um, here's some quotes from him. He's very upset about uh, the Boston bombing, and he thinks that, uh, that Obama is responsible, should be impeached. Hmm. Uh, 
Gomert says, think about it. When your attorney general spends more of his legal career helping terrorists than defending the country, then you know we all have certain biases and lean certain ways. He went on to suggest that Obama is guided by the Muslim Brotherhood. The administration know who's in there ad- ad- advising them. Either they lie under the oath or they do or they or they do know the extent of Muslim Brotherhood infiltration into our government. Unbelievable. He said uh Obama is promoting radical Islam and the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. Uh, it's made it virtually impossible to properly and adequately defend this country. Now, where is I what mean, they might call evidence in my house? Oh, <laughs> What? What? I said, where's his evidence? Of well, I mean, these? you don't need evidence. You just need a, a you know, a, a, b- a fertile imagination yeah, right, and, yes. and 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 a fear of black people and, and yeah, right. with funny names and positions of authority. When you're a squidgy, bald, you know, man um, of a certain age. Wow, but see, oh, uh, just... this is, I don't know. The, the the fact is he's hardly alone, and no, I the know, amount of I know, I know. okay here's another here's another one that flipped me out. You might have been seeing this too. Most recent poll, and this is a poll done by is it Fairleigh Dickinson University? Farley. Farley. Dickinson. Farley Dickinson. It sure is spelled fairly. Well, I've always okay. Said Farley, Farley Dickinson, Dickinson. Um, and they found that. Three in ten, essentially 30 percent of registered American voters believe that an armed rebellion against our government might soon be necessary. Now, we, what if you my know, land I, took my subway? Yes. I have to tell you though that a th- you know that third, that 30 percent thing. That crowd has been there and stayed there yeah, throughout. No, I mean, they're the ones who believe anything. They're the ones who fall for anything. They're the ones who have abs. They're the ones who cling to their guns, God knows. And they're the ones who actually do now think. Here, here's what this brings up. Armed rebellion against the government is what? Treason! Yes. It's treason. Yes. Okay. Now, even though we have a First Amendment and stuff, right. you've got all these loons on the right, and they are essentially fomenting yes. this thinking, yes. which leads to armed rebellion against the government. At what point, then, do, you know, you, you I, I, don't, I, I just, blah, blah, blah. I mean, thirty like, percent. My first thought was instead of sending help to uh, Syria, we should go to uh-huh. these militia encampments in central Pennsylvania and smash them up. Um, uh, okay, but just so you understand what the poll asked them. Yes. They were asked, did they agree or disagree with this statement? In the next few years, an armed revolution might be necessary in order to protect our liberties. All right, 29% answered, absolutely, absolutely. 5% more said, hmm, I'm not sure. So that brings us up to over a third. It's over a third of Americans. And we will not be surprised that when asked their political affiliation, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes. It, now, if you extrapolate a, the numbers, forty-four percent of Republicans agreed with the statement. Now, this was a national poll. Yes. National poll. Okay. Um. And the, the the poll says, and here's another thing: just a quarter of Americans, the, the, not Americans, voters. These are people who vote. Vote. Right. A quarter of Americans, twenty-five percent. Uh, agreed with this statement. 
Some people are hiding the truth about the school shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary in order to advance a political agenda. 25% agreed with that statement and 11% were unsure. Again, over, over one third. <coughs> and then, you know, these are the people that elect the people that are now stymieing any right, ability right, right. To the pass any to legislation, right, exactly. that this is the the Tea Party type crowd, and the conspiracy minded crowd, and they have, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is the House of Representatives has essentially been uh, taken over. Not that they hold a majority, the Republicans hold a majority, but the lunatics in the Republican Party in the House have enough of a presence yeah. to literally... St These are well, people the who... And the fact is it's not just uh, the president, right. but even Boehner can't get no, things Boehner done. No, Boehner can't, no. People say, well, why can the president get it? Boehner can't get anything done. He has no control over them at all. They will not be controlled. They are there to do what they are there to do, which is another kind of rebellion yeah, against... Right. The government, no. which they don't trust, and so they have all inf infiltrated the legislative branch and have managed to stick uh, gum in the works. Yeah, and you could argue that their efforts to, you know, foment trouble and potentially revolution. Uh, you know, are slowly moving along. One third? Yeah. If I were uh, starting a revolutionary movement and I had a third of Americans yeah, already yeah, in my in pocket, agreement, right, exactly. I'd be feeling pretty I'd be damn good. I'd be curious to know, for someone who's a historian, has, let's say, well, let's say in the 20th century, because I mean, 19th century is a whole other situation, but in the 20th century, has it ever been this bad in terms of one block of... Um, a party or one party stymieing well, government as it has been in the last three well, years. Well, I don't know about stymieing government. There's been times when one party really controls. The Republicans right. have controlled yeah, the yeah, government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they govern. I mean, so yeah, they, they got their legislation. Yeah, yeah they, right, exactly. They, I don't know that government has ever been this totally dysfunctional, certainly not in our lifetime. And to read the historians uh, about it, I mean, the current his pack of historians, I yeah, I think it's rather un- Usual yeah. to have this <clears throat> level. Well, the other of thing that's so so ridiculous is the fact of <clears throat> whether you were Republican or Democrat. We had, you know, President Bush in for eight years, and Mr. Obama now four, and the fact that in the four years that he has been in, all of the the, the belief that you know Armageddon is upon us. And all of it, you know, I, I have to say, it, it comes out of it, these stories, beginnings are all racist. Because he didn't even have a chance to do anything at the um, very beginning, or they've now not allowed him to do a lot of stuff. And the, 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 the idea is, he is in office and the country is falling apart. Where we had four year, eight years of someone else, and no one questioned that. With well, the same intensity as they are now. I... I mean, I, I, you cannot uh, remove this racial aspect. No, from you can't. Because, because a lot of the things that say he wanted to do, okay. they stopped him from doing. That's right. Well, so, so then, and then you know. say some people say it's not race. We just can't stand the man. Okay, fine. Okay, <laughs> but it is odd this confluence of a a black president right. with a funny name, right. and then all of a sudden. You get this right, and it was and immediate. It wasn't it even was like almost immediate, wait right. for three years and oh, he's a jerk. No, no, no. But this was, was a threat to America. Yeah, a this was to a America. total right, exactly. threat. These people think armed rebellion might be necessary because right. they think they're losing their country. Right, exactly. And they're losing their country because there's this black guy with a, with a middle name, name <laughs> Hussein in the damn White House, right. and there's these brown people coming from every direction. And and they've been told that the demographics are that the yeah. brown people are going to outnumber the, the white people, right. the real Americans, 
uh, soon. Yeah. So that is absolutely grounds for, yeah, grab a gun, get as much as you can. This is why the ammo's gone. This sure, is why sure, all the... Sure. And uh, what's going to end? So what's the end result of all of this? Once Obama's uh, tenure is over, do these people uh, l- sort of lose their edge a little because the black guy's gone? Yeah, but then what if we get a, a lady president? Well, the lady, they'll they'll, 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 well, they'll they'll hate Hillary almost as much, but because um, I'm assuming that's who we're talking about. Yeah, sure, of course. And uh, anyway, I. And she'll be an old lady, too. Guys. And she'll be she'll an be old 70. lady. The thing is, is um, it's getting There's a lot of... be the new curse. Old lady president. <laughs> <laughs> no, old lady is already a pejorative. Well, that's true. That's old true. ladies are relegated to uh, nothingness. I was up in England. There was this, like, old cow. <laughs> I love that. You old cow. Listen, these are uh, all sexist terms. I know, but I love old <laughs> cow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Senator Toomey's remarks have been picked up and are being run with all over the place. Oh, that wasn't he igno- a well, he, he brilliant. Sa- uh, no, 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 no. He, no, he no, no, no. He no? just absolutely explained why his effort to get this minimalist uh, gun control measure, oh, right. uh, yeah, that's right. background checks through, uh, failed. And to his mind, he was just answering the question. He said, <laughs> to his mind, it is. There are, uh, uh, um, he said, Republicans simply will not vote for anything that would give Barack Obama mm. a leg up, a victory. Yeah. Okay. So what he was saying is the animus, the hatred of, the desire to take down Barack Obama, trumps. Yeah. Their own, what they took an oath to do, what they took an oath to do, which was to to do their job, to govern. If the animus trumps everything, yeah, right. then they're simply not, well, they're... Sentient. They're not what? Sentient. Well, they're... Yeah. I mean, their, their hatred goes beyond anything logical. Well, or, their hatred goes beyond, their hatred for him goes beyond their love of country. Yeah. Or their hatred for him goes beyond their, uh, you know, their intellectual well, ability know, to comprehend it. Me. I mean, they might even, they might even, what he was suggesting is they agreed with the, uh, the legislation. They thought yeah, the right, legislation right. was fine. But, but they couldn't right, right, do right, right, it right. because it was his. Well, the funny thing I was just thinking about when you said that is, when Mr. Obama steps down, the possibility, let's say, we had a Republican, is that they'd be a brown person like Jindal or uh, Rubio, Rubio. <laughs> which is sort of a joke in a sense. Well, see, of, their brown people are different. They're cafe au lait. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're somehow. They're a latte as opposed whatever. to um, black coffee. They're not afraid of them. Yeah. Um, so this, I... You cannot have, so this government is being run off the rails by people whose hate and fear has overcome them. Yeah. I don't, I I, I mean, I I don't see how else you can, uh, you can explain it. And when you have a Republican, a conservative Republican like Toomey, simply acknowledging it as fact. He didn't make a big deal about it. He said anything that would give uh, the president a victory, they simply will not vote for. Well, (laughs) I mean, stop and think what that means. Uh, So, well, you can't have a government with people like that in in a position to vote. exactly. Exactly. And legislate. It's very, very... Uh, it's, it's, it's an outrage. And I am suggesting that this 30-some percent of Americans who su- think armed rebellion is right around the corner to take down the government, that they already have um, a debilitating, for all of us, foothold in our government, mm, in mm. the legislative branch. Yeah. It's already there. Yeah. So now immigration reform, which everybody thought was going to go right through because the Republicans had to have it, and the Democrats wanted it, and you had Marco Rubio, the great brown hope, and he was, uh, you know, on on board. And now everybody's saying, looks like we can't do this. And why can't they do it? 
They can't do it because of those guys in the house. Yeah. That same knot of nut bags. And not just nut bags, but irresponsible Malevolent nut bags. Well, they, they really are determined. Yeah. To, they'll take the government down. They'll yeah. take this president down if they can, and that's all that matters to them. Also, their fear of brown people. They don't want to. You know, the other thing that's so funny is when they talk about, oh, the people, that, the people have elected Mr. Obama twice. The nation know. has spoken. Yeah, well, they don't. They don't. But they that, don't that part agree. of the nation they don't care about. No, and they don't agree with the whole, <clears throat> um, you Excuse know, me. They, they like the idea of the United States and its government as long as they're in charge of it. Yeah, right. As soon as they're not in charge, they start opting out. They don't, no, right, they, exactly. they don't, they don't like it. Right. Um, so I find this scary. I do. I find this really scary. No, it is because you see government just stalled. And and then and then you know as we talked to the glass and week, then people jump all over Obama. Yeah right. But what I mean, the hell but, is he supposed to? But do? then you know sort of just I mean it's a silly thing and I talked about because I've been flying for the last couple of weeks. But yeah. when they want to move something that's going to help them, for the, oh the, man, the, uh, what do you call it? What's yeah, it the again? air traffic controllers. Yeah, no, the the blinding no, speed, no, what, the, the sequester. The sequester. That's right. You know, and whoop, it's out. You know, they found the money someplace else. So it's like when it's their world, they'll jump immediately. And despicable. Vote. It's despicable. I'm yes. sorry, just flat out friggin' despicable. So the more we learn of our fellow Americans, the more uh, unsettling it becomes. Stewie. But that if it is, it, it, it's even a little over a third. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, just so as you know, there's a fifth column, and it's in the country, and they're citizens. And they're, and they, they, they're like, worried about these Kazakhs, you know, these whatever, that, you know, people coming from. Well, uh, what I love about that is this business of, in the middle of all this, the Boston thing, there was this question of, like, furners, but also sort of dark furners. And someone wrote, well, they're from the Caucasus, and that's where we get the word Caucasian, Caucasian which idiot. I thought was great. No, it's true. They're from the Caucasus. That's Caucasian. But they speak with an accent. They speak with an accent, and they don't quite look like those of us who came from I thought Europe. they were both sort of cute, actually. Yeah, they're good looking. Good looking. Yeah, they're good looking. Um, if you're going to have a terrorist, damn it, he should be good looking. No, they shouldn't <laughs> be good looking. Anyway, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. More is on the way with Lynn Cullen Live. It's warming up outside, so get to Littles for all your spring needs. Littles has everything for men, women, and children to stay in style for this upcoming hot summer. Lots of great colors from Dansko, New Balance, Steve Madden, and much, much more. Don't forget to come visit this season's colorful handbag selection as well. Little Shoes, Pittsburgh's largest family shoe store, 5850 Forbes Avenue in Squirrel Hill. Go to BarkBargains.com for great deals on gift cards from your favorite local restaurants, bars, museums, attractions, and shows. Like us on Facebook or sign up for our weekly email updates for your chance to win a family four-pack of tickets to Kennywood. BarkBargains.com, Pittsburgh's best bargains. BarkBargains.com. Have a question or an opinion? Call Lynn Cullen at 412-316-3381 or email lynn at pghcitypaper.com. Now, more with Lynn Cullen Live. Yeah. Put on a miniskirt. <laughs> um, okay. I don't know if I can take much more of this. Okay, here's uh, what, 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 here's the other thing. Okay. Well, I brought this up yesterday. Um, I, I was <clears throat> talking about how in the last month, uh, just an amazing number of children under the age of six, I think, had killed or uh, with guns. Um, well, other shooting, other children, yeah. or in one case, uh, a woman. Um, another case, I, I mean, they just, you know, they get, there's guns around, they pick them up. Yeah, and they don't and know they the difference up. between what? a toy what? gun and a real one. Whatever. Anyway, they're killing them left and well, right. Well, something, where did I just see Well, this? for one, some reason, the, um, the one case that I had mentioned, the, the, um, Kentucky case of the five-year-old boy who 
was given a rifle. I mean, it was his rifle. Okay. The five-year-old had a rifle. And it was uh, usually kept in the corner. Mm. And the mother thought... Next to the umbrella. Yeah, right. <laughs> and the, no, right. And the umbrella, uh, yeah, the umbrella. And the mother thought that there was no shell in it. And the kid uh, took it and shot his sister, two-year-old sister, dead. Ugh. Okay, now this, and, and, and the coroner said, oh, this is just one of those crazy accidents. And like to our mind, that's an accident? I mean, it's an accident of sorts, but what the hell is a five-year-old doing with a gun, his own, and why and would it be? Put a bullet in it. Yeah, put a, and, and and so where's the parental responsibility? Yeah. Anyway, a little more information now. Uh, they're they're very reluctant there clearly to charge the mother. They don't want to. You know why? Because everybody in this part of rural Kentucky has, gun. has guns, Excellent. and their kids have guns. They have yeah, kids. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it's just it's it's that is the culture. Well, it turns out the Pennsylvania connection is that the maker of these guns that are aimed, no pun intended, at children, at the children's So they're kitty size? At the children's okay. gun market. <laughs> That's not talking about an oxymoron. It's not. <laughs> I went to their website. I went to their website let's, last let's night. Let's go get us a coon. No, no, no. I went to their website last night. They're huge. <laughs> They're huge. And are they pale blue and pale pink, these guns for kids? Why are you laughing? Well, because it's so ludicrous. But it's real. I know, I know, but it's just this so is Welcome to America, you elitist. Well, Open up your eyes case, and see, your, see it. No, the, yes, they come in hot pink. <laughs> They hey, come in blue. They come in all kinds of colors. Are Go you to serious? the web. Are you joking, though? I, in my world, I Collins. spent as long as I could stand it on their website last okay, night. Okay. They even have like a little uh, a kitty corner on you know where you could click on the kitty corner. Oh, jeez. And there up comes unbelievable page after page of pictures that have been sent to them by happy owners. Of their product. So we have Honey Boo Boo standing there. No, no, right. It's one little kid after another holding their guns, firing their guns, thrilling with their guns. That really sounds so ludicrous. It sounds like Saturday Night Live skit. I mean, see, it shows how, but it's. No, it's. And then that America that doesn't understand. More than a third. They look at. Uh, people yeah, like right. you, and they find you just absolutely. Well, you know, the, the thing that's so crazy about it is I could see a kid, you know, oh, let's get a gun, daddy has a gun, or let's play, so, you know, soldiers and Indians or whatever. But then the, the parent who would proudly photograph that kid with a gun, smile for mommy, you know, and then send it into the gun shop. Okay, I, I want mean, it's so. Hey, guys, go. Ludicrous. It's called Keystone. Wonderful. Keystone oh. Sporting Arms. Google it. Get to their site. It goes down. on and on and on. You could die. Do they have one with Swarovski crystals on <laughs> it? for my lady with Swarovski crystals. See, I can't laugh at this. <laughs> I know, but it's You're so unlikely. Once I, <laughs> well, you know what it is? I haven't seen it. I mean, it just seems so much, as I said, like a Saturday Night Live skit. But it's, it's so, not. I know, it's I know, real. I know, I know. Welcome to your country, okay? That is not my country. That that's is why your we, country. That's why we had a civil war, dear. No, well, sorry. <laughs> the war was fought to unite the I country. Know, I know. Okay, right. so right. we now live in a country. Keystone, what was it again? S- sporting Arms. Sporting it's in arms. Milton, PA. Oh, fabulous. Business is booming. Uh, it, this yes. is a company that was founded in 1996. Oh, my God. And uh, it had only four employees when now it first. they have 400, right? Something like that, probably. No, not that big. They have 70. Well. And uh, that was. Oh, that was in 2008, so who the heck? No, I'm sure they have many more. 
and they're Jesus. putting out as many as 60,000 rifles a year. Oh, but again, geez. that was 2008. Oh. And um, uh, if you go to their website and go to the Kitty, I think it was called Kitty Corner or something, just check that out and, and see if, um, if you recognize this country. Hey, child. Well, oh, hello. there's my nephew. <laughs> Will you stop it? Hello? Hello? Hey, hang on. Ooh, that was like a child calling. I got my rifle in my hand, Miss Cullen. I'm going to shoot me a sparrow. He's going to hate you. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, I just, I'm laughing because it's just so unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, stop laughing then. All right, all right. Sit there with your mouth hanging open. Censorship. <laughs> Censorship. It is. I just, you take that. You take no, no, the no, no, congressman from Texas and all the others. You take, you know, what Toomey said. And I'm sorry, guys, there is a huge part of this country that we, okay, let's, let's be honest, that you look down on. Yeah. Yes, okay, okay. And they hate for those, you. For those they reasons. hate your guts because yeah. you look down on them. Like Obama, they cling to their guns yeah. and their religion. Okay. So you see this divide. Right. Yeah, okay. no, I agree with that. And uh, I don't see how the twain shall meet. No, I agree with you. Well, that's why I said civil war. But here's what elitists should keep in mind. <laughs> because if she shakes her finger in my nose. They're always the minority. Of course. Okay. Well, but these all, people are okay. not the majority. Come on, give us, let's give us that. There may be a third, but the third does not make a majority. Okay, let's give them. Um, maybe you got. They're a palpable okay. mass. Let's put that way. And I'll they're bigger than that. the elite. They are bigger than the elite. Hello. Hey. Yeah. Lynn, uh, George, and Mo. Hi, George. Hey. Hello. Tokoloski? Yes. Okay. Here's another one for your book of. Uh, complete amazement of the gun culture in the U.S. All right. Uh, about a year or so ago, I, I'm getting an echo on this call. But, oh, sorry. Well, we're um, not. It, there was a, a picture circulating. It, it just angered me and upset me so much. I, I, I just, it was the worst. Um, it was a picture of uh, two neighbors in their front lawns and one neighbor had a sign, a uh, lawn sign in it, that said, it had a large arrow pointing to the neighbor and saying, I, uh, I respect the Second Amendment and have guns to protect myself. My neighbor does not. Please, um, uh, uh, words to the effect of, if you want any criminal activity, please take it to him because I'll kill you, and he won't. But I will not protect him This is from all on this attack. sign? I mean, what was that, a screen 20 feet tall? Yeah. What? Uh, and, well, can that, you believe it? Well, uh, geez, that must be a pleasant neighborhood. Yeah, so <laughs> yes, it's right. like a neighbor trying to intimidate another neighbor into, like, buying yeah, a gun yeah. because of his own paranoia, but also saying he's not going to be a good neighbor to protect his right. neighbor yeah. because his neighbor is so stupid and not buying a gun. So, therefore, attack my neighbor, please. How about that? Really? And they sell these signs. What? They sell these signs. Yes. They s Who sells these? They sell them in... Yeah, They're sold on the, the Internet. Keystone yeah. oh, Sporting oh. Arms probably Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Really I was is. just so aghast when I saw it. Well, you know, you could have your attitude about the Second Amendment. It's disgusting enough. But when you put it out there yeah, to right. intimidate your neighbor right. and invite him to be attacked or something, yeah. and, and also state that you're not, gonna, you're not going to help your neighbor because he's so stupid. Is that unbelievable? Yeah, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Or not. So, I oh, but one other comment I wanted to get into. Um, this thing about using Second Amendment so-called rights for... Uh, defending your rights against the government, whatever. Uh, I think there's a failure in education. Uh, I just wonder what the quality of civics education is 
the generations or two grows up. I don't think it exists. doesn't understand the First Amendment and our right to petition the government for grievances and assembly and free speech and all those things that are a Democrat, part of a democratic state, to do those first, right. okay? Uh, but they choose to take guns to defend their rights. What happened in that educational process that the NRA won out on guns defending your rights as opposed sure. to democratic means? Well, listen, in civics, the, the I, some of the people don't, don't even know we have a Congress and a Senate. And if listen, they don't know that, how are they going to they, they don't teach civics anymore. I mean, there was. Well, a, it's obvious. There yeah. was an, uh, you know, a standalone civics class yeah, sure. that usually that. I think we got in around seventh grade, sixth, Something seventh like grade. That, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, you really, you know, whatever, you, you did look at the, you know, the duties and responsibilities and freedoms and all that kind of right. stuff. And it doesn't exist anymore. Well, uh, I think that's part and parcel of this. These kids are growing up swallowing this fantasy stuff about defending the rights with guns instead of understanding what the Constitution says about a citizen's right and responsibilities to also, uh, you know, gain gain those rights and uh, redresses and everything like that. And it's the democratic process that's not being respected or, or, you know, or or educated among uh, the young people. Oh, uh, PJ, thank you. PJ sent me a picture of the sign. Nice, nice, uh, azaleas nice azaleas on this gun nuts uh, yeah. out, <laughs> in, on his yard. And he clearly is using some serious uh, uh, pesticides or something or uh, herbicides <laughs> right. on his Herbicide. lawn. It is spotless. And here, it's AstroTurf. <laughs> and here is the sign. My next door neighbor, with a big red arrow, my there next door go. neighbor wants to ban all guns. Oh. Their house is not armed. Out yeah, of that's res- one of one forms of it. Right, yeah, right, and then it says, out of respect for their opinions, I promise not to use my guns to protect them. How that's about what it that? Says. How about that? Hmm. Hmm. Is, is that the most obnoxious thing? That's pretty, uh... Yeah. Disgusting. Yeah. Talk All about right. you know, love your neighbor. You turn it upside <laughs> right. down. Hate yeah, I'm neighbor. sure. I'm sure Christ would like really. All right, exactly. Appreciate that. No one's bringing yeah. over a covered dish with that Man. casserole. Wow. Okay. In these nut cases, I think that they, you know, they, um, uh, they apparently they don't see the reaction of the real public. Like in Boston, was that the public came out, supported law enforcement, and and praised them afterwards. Mm. And whereas these gun nuts believe that only militias and armed individuals do that. You know, well, you know I think the interesting thing about apocalypse. that was, and we've just seen it, we were talking about that during the break, that partly that had to do, well, it was horrible, to, to, you know, terrorist implications, but the fact that it was a foreigner. And, like, we had to get that to those foreigners who threw that bomb. Yeah. I mean, if they had been a white American... I think the response would have been slightly different. No, they still would have applauded the police. Well, they would have done the same. It was like there was a terrorist in our midst. I mean, that was very much. Mm. I don't know. I don't know how much that. I don't know. I mean, those people. Okay, nice talking to you. Thank you. Thanks for talking through the the echo you had, too. Well, I'm sorry. I must be in a bad mood or something today. And who wouldn't be if you're looking at this? Well, that was what happens to my hometown of Chicago. Last night, three people were killed and 17 injured. I mean, one night. Sure. I mean, it's just, where are we? What? Hello, caller. Yeah, I'm just going to make a quick comment. Mm-hmm. I say this all the time and repeat myself, but you'd be better off. You probably would get struck by lightning before you'd have to defend yourself with a gun in your home. Yes. There's studies that show that that does not happen that often. Yeah. And either when you, you have to be the perfect situation, and a lot of times, you harm somebody else that's innocent. Or but yourself. These idiots cannot believe that. I had guns. I was a hunter. I never even thought about defending myself. What the hell are we living in? You know? But yeah, people right. were just believing that yeah, shit. Right. See you later. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Bye. Well, see, you obviously are missing that part of the brain that is overdeveloped in, in these mm-hmm. gun nuts. And that is uh, it, uh, uh, the ability to fear. Um, mm. The unknown, the unseen, the assumption that somehow danger is lurking 
all around you, and you must be well, on it, your. I just don't it's know that, how Lynn, you but live I think the other that part way. Of it, it's that, but it's also the fact of. I believe. I just I almost wanted to break in this song. I believe from the Book of Mormon <clears throat> show, but that I believe that you know that's why there's police and the police will protect me. And yes, there are times when people do get killed. That's what we ag- we the, the communal. That, response, that's the whole point. That's a communal response to safety. These well, but people I mean, we, don't. They they don't trust that that's enough. Well, and, and also be- I really think something I was thinking with one of the callers is that I think it has something also to do with not protecting, but being like a man. Yeah, and a that's man a in his homestead, it. and I can shoot a gun as well as the next guy, and being right. you know Davy Crockett or something. Well, and also I mean I know Barack Obama said that Michelle when she was going to rural Iowa mentioned to him, she said, you know, I can see that if you live way out in middle of nowhere, your next neighbor is, you know, over the next hill, that you might want a firearm in your home in case somebody came, because there's no cops around. Mm. And she said, I can see where there might be that sense that I need, I might have to defend myself if some bad guy shows up at my door. Okay. So maybe in rural areas, I'm under more understanding of it. But that doesn't get, I don't know how you get from there to the point where, you know, you have guns for four-year-olds under the Christmas tree. I don't, We're I don't North get where you, <laughs> Wow. Anyway, we got to take a break again, as we will. Stick around for more. We'll, we'll be right Lynn back. We'll be right back. After this. Give the gift of beauty and youth this Mother's Day. Join us Saturday, May 11th for a day of rejuvenation, skin care, and fun at the Swickley Med Spa. Purchase one microdermabrasion and mom gets a free microdermabrasion. Log on to SwickleyMedSpa.com or call 412-259-8628 for details. Swickley Med Spa is conveniently located in downtown Swickley at 435 Broad Street. Happy Mother's Day from the Sewickley Med Spa. Pittsburgh City Paper is seeking 10 local artists to design their own street box for our second annual public art project to be featured throughout the city of Pittsburgh. Go to www.pghcitypaper.com and click on the art box link for more details. The Pittsburgh City Paper Art Box Project, brought to you by the Westmoreland and Hill House Association. I didn't know about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease until I took the wheel and lent my support to drive for COPD. Help Americans take action against this leading cause of death by logging on to driveforcopd.org to learn more. I'm Nancy Cartwright, the voice of Bart Simpson, and I drive for COPD. Now, it's back to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Okay, okay. So there's potentially a very interesting murder mystery unfolding here in in Pittsburgh. Oh, was that? There was an obit uh, the other day about the untimely death and shocking death of a major uh, researcher at Pitt, Mm. uh, a woman, Mm. Dr., I think her name is Autumn Klein, who had really just moved here. She and her husband had been at Harvard and in, in Boston. And then he got a job, because he's a researcher, a medical researcher as well. He got a job here. She followed him here. She also got a job at uh, UPMC. And um, all of a sudden, she dropped dead in her home mm. the other night. But uh, now they have found cyanide in her body. Ooh. So it appears that she was drugged, poisoned, poisoned. and um, wow. By whom? I don't know. But there was a quite a an outpouring of disbelief on her, upon her death. She's a young woman, and and a brilliant woman apparently. Ooh, and, awful. Um, and and now she is, uh, I guess, Six potentially a murder victim. And they have, um, I guess, the homicide division is uh, is looking into it. So that's uh, something I'm going to. Who do they? Well, there's no suspects. There's nothing. I mean, there's nothing. I would uh, think the husband would have to be a major suspect because, think, right. first of all, uh, the article in the Post Gazette today said it's very difficult to get cyanide. Oh, um, mm. That the only way you get it usually is through, um, you, you know, if you have access through a medical lab right, or right, something right, like that. Right, so right. 
because her husband also is a researcher, you would think he, but it just doesn't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about anything. Uh, could so. have been on the office. Coffee with milk and cyanide. Wow. They say it kills you. Yeah, that's a sign from it, yeah. It's an well, ugly, but there's also it's an some ugly, ember, but I think it was a, yeah. uh, what do you call it, Agatha Christie or one of these. But then I think one of the ways you can kill someone with cyanide also and not make it so glaring is you can give Just it incrementally. Little bit, little, little and as you tea add tea on, because I think cyanide doesn't leach out of your body. Your body sort of, and then when you hit the, the amount that is lethal, then... You're gone. Yeah. Well... I don't know. I'm just oh saying. Also, locally, just want to say that uh, after uh, Ravenstall's uh, Facebook rant uh, the uh, other day, and uh, oh, I didn't hear about that. What was that? I was uh, in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Well, I heard about him being the head of the committee. He's to, the head of the but committee what, what for a better Pittsburgh. Um, he ranted about this the article in the Post Gazette, which. Um, which outed him as the chairman oh, 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 right. of it, and it is the most uh, scurrilous, childish oh. uh, diatribe that oh, you no. can imagine. It is really, it, well, it's, like, it's like every other line is, you know, nah, 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 nah. it is just so unbelievable. So I just wanted well, to say boy this, there. <laughs> well, Wagner has now, in an effort to like not, have, not be Distance besmirched yeah. by this, has um, the quote that he made yesterday, which just annoys the hell out of me, he's trying to tie Peduto <laughs> to Ravenstahl. You know, Ravenstahl's, I'm sorry, in his camp, right. Wagner. Hey, that's your boy. Yeah, right. And you, you got all the boys, uh, you know, guys. Yeah, right. Everybody right. whoever was with him is now with you. Right. Uh, and so when the boy shows himself to be who he is, uh, I don't know how you like act like yeah. you have nothing to do with it. Well, the way you would and, do it is it would say, I denounce someone. Yeah, well, he hasn't. To, well, so here's what he to, said. Yeah. He said that it's an indication of their immaturity. He's talking about Peduto and Ravenstahl. An indication of their immaturity. These people need to grow up. He has put Peduto in with him. Mm. Well, well, you know, you know what I, also what that is, too, is the fact of what he's saying there subtly. The other part is not subtle. It's like, I have some years on me. I've been in government for 30 years, and these two young'uns, I think there's part of that, too. Like, oh, this wise older guy. I don't think old, oh, uh, old anymore equates with, you know, old. No, but I think that's what he's probably suggesting, though. You know, I've been, I fought, because I saw one of his ads, and what does he begin with? I fought with the Marines. It looks like, fine, but what does that have to oh, do no, with Oh, no, that being, gets a lot of votes. Oh, I know, I know, but I'm thinking, what does that and have I mean, to do with And, I mean, he had a horrific experience. A war, yeah, well, I agree. well, so did John McCain, but, I mean, that doesn't make you a good uh, government official because you served... As a military no, person. No, but if you have it, you do use it. Oh, of it. course. No, 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 no. But it's shtick. Yeah. It's shtick. But that, the sad part of that is, I think most of us, I mean, so is being, you know, racist. It's shtick. It's not dealing with Obama or Bush or whatever for what they're about. It's what they look like or how they smell. And that's how most people vote. Oh, Kennedy was cute. Or so-and-so was such-and-such. Such. It's We vote for the most silly and superficial of Well, the, we vote for the person that we're... Taken most, with. Most comfortable with. Yeah, right. Right, often. Well, I have to say, dear voters, I'm going to be out of the country for the 21st uh, you know, primary. Hmm. And I just sent for my Your my absentee ballot. Good for you. Well, it's, I think it's going to be an important election. And the unfortunate thing is, as we all know, for a primary, you know, Zilcho people will vote. I mean, it's always a terribly low turnout. Well, with a mayoral, this a mayoral election might pull a few it more might, people It might, but in. not that a ton. Be, yeah. yeah, because as you know, everyone knows. I mean, whoever, you're electing who, the school board, you're electing right. judges. These elections oh, who, are the ones that really oh, have uh, more impact really. on, your, on your daily life. It's true. But like, who knows who the judges are? Hey, did you see my busway won an international award? Your busway? <laughs> you sound like, what's her name? Uh, uh, well, Scarlett O'Hara or whatever. Say, my busway, it's just for me. 
I love that busway, and I've been raving about it for you. I get on that thing. I am down here in 10 minutes. It's like Cinderella and her coach. Lynn and her bus. It's like magic. Why would anybody drive if you had no, that busway? Right. Well, you're it, it represents mind. the best of what public transport yeah. is and should be. Jeez. Well, now, why did it win an award? It won an award of some group internationally goes around to countries oh, and assesses well their bu- actually bus ways. That's, right. a, that's their thing. And uh, we didn't come out absolutely no, on top, right. but I think in the United States. Well, really, you know, oh, no, so, Cleveland had Cleveland has some line that I have heard okay. of before that is marvelous. Well, you know what? I've never been on. Maybe I'll just someday take it just to take it. Invite me for tea and I'll take the bus. But, um, well, because it's really like the subway. It's a unique that's right. form and it and doesn't that's get in the way is. of anything. They said because it's totally unique, there it's is fast. no other. Yeah. yeah, you don't stop. You just zip down. It's not a it, it's it's the same as having. You know, a subway, yeah. a, a subway or a train, a train track, uh, and yeah. bang oh! And then they said that the way it's designed um, that also impressed them is that there's enough lanes on it that every time you get to a stop, it widens out to four lanes. Oh, I see. Okay. So that a bus, buses don't back up. Right, 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 right. Trying right. to put people on or let them off, right. they can buses can pass right, each right, other. Right. Um, Whatever. It's funny. I have a friend when she moved here years ago. She didn't really know whatever, so she went on the busway and she's driving along. Oh, I think that happened. Oh, there's no one here. How nice this is. Yeah, yeah. People, uh, they're talking about maybe putting a bike lane on it. And I was thinking, man, if they put a bike lane on it, you might start driving. Maybe I should bike to work. No. It'd just be a. Uh, that's a good, that'd be my no, workout. No, it would be exercise. Maybe I But then do. you'd arrive and you'd be all hot and sweaty. Oh, so what? <laughs> well, then maybe I have to have eau de cologne. <laughs> Here's a, uh, Ray has Oh, Ray. Oh, hi, Ray. As an exercise in self, con- I almost said self-contamination. <laughs> <laughs> the Ray, poison, you're on the cyanide and all. Self-examination, Ray wrote. Uh, as an exercise in self, can we ask... Can we for a moment ask ourselves, uh, what is the correlation between the gun side's hyper fear of the terrorist socialist threat to overthrow our society and our hyper fear of the gun nut threat to overthrow our society? What is the correlation? Okay, is my fear more, okay, you're asking me, is my fear more warranted, my fear of them more warranted than their fear of Mm -hmm. terrorists? Interesting interesting comment. Well, I would argue my fear is is grounded in uh, a little more reality in that they, my fear is of people who have the vote, who make up a third of the nation's voters who have already managed to stymie my government in a way that could, is it a way of taking it down, of making it so dysfunctional that it essentially hardly exists. Um, their fear of terrorists, look, I have a fear of terrorists too. Yeah, sure. Um, but well, it's not some crazy well, race-based because, right. and and well um, and also and you believe as much as they are flawed and we had our police that people guy are that, looking out for me yeah, in that regard yeah. and so far they well done not even looking out because that turns into sorts of benevolence and whatever but just that's why we have structure that's why we have a police force that's why, that's why, we, why have we have a, laws a FBI and yeah, a CIA and, CIA and, and a whatever. Homeland Security but department. you know it's very interesting something that I've been very interested in the last few years a friend put me on to this is this notion and Ray goes on about this. Um, is this notion of, of wicked problems. You know about this? Well, sociologists came up with the term in the 70s, German guy. But anyway, wicked problems are those problems that do not have, sort of very sim- simply put, easy solutions. I mean, you can say you take X antibiotic to kill mm-hmm. certain bacteria. But what happens when you have, like, in a disease, something that is resistant? Or if you say... Um, 
uh, poverty. Well, all right, I'll give you twenty-five dollars and you know twenty more, just to use an example. But that person then spends that money on liquor, and then he's poor again. Wicked problems are ones that are constantly evolving. So just when you think you've solved them, they come up again, and they need a new solution every day or every month. Because you're not dealing with the real problem, which is probably well, something. Well, underneath. it's something very deep. Right. So and I think so. What Ray is getting at is that these are something our fears of the other. Which yeah. is on both sides, as okay, you suggest. Yeah. I feel, That's something right. that you know we're. You constantly have to look, and as a government, and we as individuals have to look like, oh, it's morphing this way. Well, now how do we respond to that? Oh, well, now it's morphing that way. Our fear of the other is now about a black man in the office. Is it going to be a fear of a woman next, or an Asian, or a Jew? <laughs> um, and. It has to do with that sense of not believing that the the body politic has any uh, sophistication, honor, what have you, and that we are always going to be fearful of it. Okay. <laughs> Punked. I don't know. Do you want to read the rest of what Ray says? I do. Oh, okay. Well, please read. <laughs> he says, I mean... Like a real slow, careful consideration of the possibility that what we see as an obvious paranoid overreaction on their part is, in some way, the same mental virus that drives our side to react so strongly that we actually end up contributing to the other well, side's Well, like what you said before, me being a leader. That's right. So you know, speak. Yeah. you just, you know. Right, right, right yeah, because right. I have my prejudices right, and whatever, right. as do you. Okay, as, fine. As everyone. Okay, I'm, I'm with you there. <clears throat> the instances of horrific violence that we use as the touchstones for our actions are truly terrible, but they do not compare in terms of mortality to the real threats to our children and neighbors. Poverty, illness, neglect. Wicked problems. But th wicked problems. But those are not simple and sexy, like ban guns or ban immigrants. I hear you, Ray. I hear you, Ray. I'm not sure I'm saying this the right way, he says. The gun deaths are awful, but we need to take our own pulse because no one's going to do it for us. I agree with you. But for us to continue refusing to acknowledge that we've got a gun problem in this country and a lot of innocent people are getting killed for no reason, uh, that the fact that we cannot even discuss it or bring it right. up or or talk rationally about it. I don't well, know, but you're right. He's yeah. right about... But the, the, the issue when it comes down to is millions of people have said it better than I, but, you know, using my analogy of the, the gun being next to the umbrella, if all that kid had was the umbrella, he could have whacked his little sister, but as opposed she to really whacking killed. her, she wouldn't have been killed. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Oh, dear. Okay, cyanide, PJ writes, is contained in apple seeds. Actually, cyanide is, con is naturally occurring in yeah, right. peach pits. And well, I, I what's remember. the other thing? Um, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> anyway, he says, as far as the gun nuts go, hopefully Darwin will win out and they will slowly eliminate each other. There's an old quote that goes, science progresses one death at a time. Maybe it's the same for culture. Um, from apple cores to... Oh, you think he's saying the researcher might have eaten too many, too many apple apples. cores. No, that ain't going to do it for you. I don't think so. Um, that's not going to do it. Okay, this uh, one more thing. Did you read about the Jamestown? Uh, no. Oh, you didn't? No. Well, you know, Jamestown. Yes, the, Jamestown. The flood. No, no, no. Oh, the, yeah. What? Jamestown, the, what? the colony. The colony. Hello? 1600s. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 1600s. Yeah. Virginia. Oh, well, yeah, they, like, it was, they only left something on a tree. About, no, 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 no. Wasn't that no, well, no, there no, was no. some oh. motto left on a tree? Yes, I don't yes, know. Yes. All I want to say about Jamestown right, tell is us. this. Is when they came, they had a really rough time. At first, the Indians helped them. And then they were always asking the Indians for help, and the Indians got annoyed. <laughs> Go back to where you yeah, came the from. Thought, Geez, no, you Mo, go to my TV. You know, will you guys take a bath and get out of my face? <laughs> Chase, woo! Anyway, uh, they started starving. There was no, f okay. there was no food. And um, this has long been known because a few survivors had actually kept journals oh. uh, writing about it, including one George Percy who was sort of the head of the colony, president okay. of Jamestown. And, and there was a period called the starvation. Oof. 
and 80% of them died. Oh, my God. No, they were dying. Um, and this was known. The famine was so intense. And here's what he wrote. And, the, you know, the spelling's amazing. But he, Percy at one point wrote, it's so awful that nothing was spared to maintain life and to do those things which seem incredible, as to dig up dead corpses out of graves and eat them. Boo. They were so desperate, mm. they were eating their own, even oh, digging God. up graves. Well, they have found the remains of a 14-year-old girl who appears to have been eaten. eaten. And here's what amazes me, though, about this. There's so many amazing things in the story. First of all, what they have is a cracked skull bone. Mm -hmm. They have a jaw. They have a little bit of a leg bone. Mm -hmm. And out of this bunch of bone fragments, mm -hmm. they have constructed what she would look like, figured she was 14, mm. figured the kind of high-protein diet she ate. She ate meat, and that suggested... Dead meat. Well, that suggested that she was one of... Maybe she was not a servant. She oh, was sure. upper crust. And also, they could tell... This was so amazing. They could tell what she ate in England before she came to Jamestown. Then they could tell what she ate in Jamestown. Now, how do you wow. do that with these bones? Here's how you do it. Isotopes in her bones yes. indicate that in Jamestown she had eaten a high-protein diet. Yes. So she was probably the daughter of a gentleman. Okay. Then he could tell, the people going through it, could tell she was English because we know what skeletal remains of 17th century English people have in them mm -hmm. and the ratio of oxygen isotopes in her bones indicated that she had grown up in the southern coastal region of oh England. And the carbon isotopes in her bones pointed to an early diet that included English rye and barley. The assumption is she came across the ocean probably with an expedition that was in bringing supplies. And mm. there were six ships mm. one week out of landing in mm. Jamestown, a big hurricane comes. This is historically known. Yeah. The ships all get separated. The flagship, which was called the Sea Venture, ends up driven onto reefs in Bermuda. Oh, my God. And here, this blew me away. And that ship, ending up on the reefs in Bermuda, was the event that inspired William Shakespeare to write The Tempest. Come on. The people on that ship in Bermuda eventually got their act together, managed to and got and did a year later make it to Jamestown where they found about 12 people Starving left. Starving people. <laughs> Skeletons, essentially. They said wow. skeletal remains, but they then... Brought them back to uh, Bermuda. But the girl, they figure, was on one of the, the one ship that did get in. I see. That came into Jamestown and was not welcome. Because when they got there, they didn't have a lot of supplies on oh, their ship. Now they're be so all they are is extra mouths yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to feed. So this poor 14-year-old girl, they figure, uh, got was on one of the other ships. Uh, this is bizarre. Wow. Yeah. So when the um, the... The one from Bermuda, which is responsible for the Tempest, gets to Jamestown in 1610. Uh, they found just 60 survivors. Mm. But that out of these 
fragments of bone. Well, you know what's interesting about you that? You could create a well, story. Well, you know what's well that story is incredible. Was this in the Times? This is New York Times today. today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got it too. Well, you know what's interesting? I have a friend who does photographs of these these uh, forensic heads, mm -hmm. and it's very interesting because there have been a number. There's the most famous guy who did these, died about a year ago. But anyway, how they really could reconstruct them, and then someone would say, "Oh, that is that's Betty." Mm -hmm. Then you really can through you these. You really can. But this whole business about the isotopes is amazing. You know? Amazing. And the Tempest, it sounds like a good graduate school paper. You so, know? you know, if they dig me up in, in 500 years, they'll say, ugh. A uh, Kreplock! Uh, a loud help. mouth. Oh, <laughs> it's coming. It was a loud mouth, a public scold. <laughs> she had a horrible diet. <laughs> <laughs> God, and you know, we've gone over. <laughs> <laughs> well, that story was worth it. That was the jewel want, of, yeah. well, I have the Times at home, oh, okay. but, but uh, what a great story. Isn't that great? Isn't that fascinating? But what's interesting is the fact that didn't they pay attention to what the Indians were growing or shooting? or No, the, the Indians were at that point then killing them. No, 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 they no. They no, could not I, leave the, their little settlement without getting killed. They went out foraging for roots and oh, stuff, right, right, yes. and the Indians oh, killed them. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Okay. No, they'd worn out their welcome long, I see. long before. So this poor 14-year-old girl. Uh, well, but she was dead already, though. Before, before they ate her, yeah, yeah. they dug her up, but. Oh. Well, the other thing is, like, I mean, it's one thing to eat a person no, who's but, fresh, <laughs> you know, moldering one. Well, mm. I, and they wrote openly about it, that they had to, yeah. that well. they ended up eating people. Oh, and there was a funny quote from somebody that I read somewhere about it, uh, where one of them actually said, I don't know if a woman uh, is better... The juice your morsel? Yeah, barbecued or <laughs> no? I'm not kidding. That's well, what they well, said. Well, it becomes your, well, your sustenance. Well, barbecued, boiled, or blah blah blah, <laughs> powdered. I think. Hello, the Hannibal other thing. Lecter. <laughs> no, really, and they're writing this. This is 1609 <laughs> during the. Unbelievable, and you know what? That's when Americans needed a gun. A gun. Okay. <laughs> That's when there was a threat. <laughs> yeah, right. But everywhere. Those engines. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Well, Tom, thank you. I'm sorry I was screaming at you earlier. Well, it was an interesting show. Uh, well, that is a that is an assessment better left to uh, to our audience. To the audience. <laughs> yes, Absolutely. I yes, you're right. Um, hey, an audience. I'll be back tomorrow. We can talk some more. And there'll be some more about cannibalism. Maybe, cannibalism, maybe. too. Oh, it's, it's hard. That is such an amazing story. <laughs> no, it is story. an amazing story. Bye-bye. Okay. Toodaloo. Lynn Cullen Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Cullen Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.